uh, we're doing an old-fashioned tailgate. What'd you guys call it? A taco mori taco tailgate? I was gonna fly the drone, but there's a sign saying you can't fly drones. We're at the grotto. The uh, water's so cold. I'm just sitting here with people watching, watching people go in. And the first thing it does is takes the water. The water is so ice cold. And if you've ever been to the grotto, you'll know. Uh, if you haven't been to the grotto, it's in the Bruce Peninsula National Park, I believe it's called. So here at McGregor Point, they have brand new fill stations. That's right. There's actually quite a few of them too. There seems like to be one there, one there, another one here, and another one where I'm filling up right over here. So four fill stations. That's uh, pretty impressive. I'm glad that they've, uh, like a lot of these uh, provincial parks here in Ontario need to uh, retrofit a lot of their facilities because uh, they're just aged. So this one's a brand new one, as you can see, it's got a nice uh, lever there and it's, they're all threaded. That's a good thing. They're threaded and because we're so close to it and I, as you notice, they're on both sides. You can be on both sides, but because it's so close to it, I don't have to hold it in there. I need, they don't need one of the kids to hold it in there while I uh, fill it up. I can just stick it right in there and uh, it, it sits. That doesn't always happen. I asked her to do that. Abby? Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. We are at McGregor Point Provincial Park and uh, I spared you the drive sequence like we usually do. Spared you the setup like we sometimes do. And we're all uh, unpacked and everything. It's early evening, it's time for dinner. We're just getting dinner and finishing up a little bit of unpacking. In this episode, we're gonna bring you five RV safety tips. Now, I, these are my five tips. I think uh, the top five tips that I think most people, if I was telling people what to do, I would tell them these tips. But if you've got better tips uh, that you find are more safe or more important, comment down below and let me know. But I hope you enjoy it. Let's check it out. Tip number one, always make sure you chalk your tires before unhitching your tow vehicle. <laughs> No. <laughs> Turn out a camera. No, he's got the camera. <laughs> you got it? Oh, <laughs> Very <yes>. bumpy. <laughs> right. We got it. Hey, you don't think I heard the deet, deet, deet. Well, there's a. Yeah, I know, right? The one, the video coming up tomorrow. You're, uh. You're, oh, you're near, near the end of it for next week's video. I never remember where, your, your, where I, you're. You, I'm videotaping and you're like, you stand right in front of me, you bend over to the fire. I'm like, thanks, Darren. Why don't you put my thing? Oh, it was the worst angle when I was oh. talking about the. Um, oh, you sounded angry. Ass, ass running into the lake is not on me. Like, and then, but this because yeah. I was leaning back in the, the chair, <laughs> like, chair, like the angle. I wasn't. I wasn't angry though. I know, but but the little snippet I took of it, oh. like out of context, it sounds like. Yeah. You know what? Those people. I don't care about those people or whatever you said. <laughs> well, I think I was saying. <clears throat> Um, the people on Facebook are saying, oh, just suck it up. Yeah. But that I went on to say, but they've probably never lived. Yeah, but I didn't put that part in, in, in the snippet. I just put, they could just suck it up. Yeah, it was a bad So show. So this site we have here is surrounded by you're bushes. Recording whole oh, you're conversation. Recording? Yeah, the whole time. Oh, so, God, Dad. So this... I'm only getting this one part though, so let me do it. I th over there, I took like four tries to oh do one God. thing. Okay. So around this site here has these bushes that surround the whole entire site. It has little berries on the bushes, and I guess the birds and uh, chipmunks are, are getting their berries. But every now and then, I guess they fall onto Darren's awning over here. I don't know if you can see the awning. And he's sitting right here, and as he sits here, the berries are falling and hitting him. And I guess he sat on one of them, and that's where his it's pants are like that. It's your wife's fault because she kept make, making yeah. you move back. So when you're flaring with your fire, always make sure to put it out. That's your safety tip number two. So last year when we were at this, uh, we actually we weren't at this exact same uh, site, 
but last year we also at McGregor had a, a double sight and a few people asked what's a double sight and I guess I didn't explain it properly so this is a double sight if let me back up for a second here first so as you can see this is the roadway here and there's a, a little hand washing station there from here is where you would start this is like you would think this would be just one person site but if you go into here you can actually see that it splits it splits this way and it splits this way so this is one site and i'll just go in here and show you it's a small smaller site i mean uh it's not huge or anything but it fits our 25 foot trailer and a truck and you can see the space over there um the only problem is like i said last year too is they you share one electrical uh tower right which is right there for both sides so by putting the fire pit there you're forcing someone to put their trailer here so what that does is you force them to have an extension and you run it across your site not a end of the world not a big huge deal but other than aesthetics uh, it's not too practical because it sort of gets in the way and uh some younger kids and stuff like that could trip so this is one site and if you go over here see Darren's and this is another one so like I said you share the one driveway but when you come in here you have access and they're electrical because they're on the right hand side of the site works out perfect and uh they don't have that issue and then when you come here you can see their site's a little bit bigger than ours uh it's more conducive for you know not entertaining but you know you are you are doing a group site here so you are uh having two families or two parties not parties, but two uh, sets of people or groups of people coming out here. So that's why you would want to get these sites. As a matter of fact, these sites you can't order or you can't reserve online. You have to actually call in by phone and you can reserve it that way. And when you call in, uh, you have to uh, book both sites. So that avoids you booking one site and then a total stranger that you don't know has the site next to you which is very very intimate and very close so you have to get both sites um, so they don't call it a group site they call it a double site but really what it is it's a mini group site for and i think online it says it'll fit seven to eight people so this is perfect so you got two small families like us and uh one set here and one set over here that's a double site Okay, another safety tip. When you're using a weight distribution hitch and you've got this style here where you have to uh, use this cheater bar to hook this up on, you would do it just like normal. Put it on. When it's on, never take this out until you have the little L-shaped locking pin to put in there. So never take this out because if this bar happens to slip out and it'll come out with a lot of force, this will take out your kneecaps or your shins or your femur and it with the amount of pressure on it it will break your leg so be very very careful never take this out this cheater bar out of the hole until you have this ready to put it in right away afterwards once this one's out this one goes in a split second later and then you can put the uh locking pin in that is a safety tip that's a big one because you don't want to lose your leg Turn left, all right. So it's 36 degrees with the humidity and we're almost three hours north of the GTA. So it's pretty hot. I can only imagine uh, back home, it's probably like 40 plus. So, and, and there's hardly any wind. So we're going down to the beach. We're gonna spend, I'm not a big beach person, but I'm gonna spend the whole entire day at the beach. Hence our chairs, the wagon, and the kayak and the paddleboard. And you know what, this site, this uh, double site, like I mentioned there before, it's very, very close to the uh, Campers Beach, which is one of the nicer beaches here in McGregor Point.
Okay, another safety tip is to invest in one of these surge protectors. Like, these are a lifesaver. I mean, I, I originally I thought they were too expensive, but compared to what can happen and what the cost is to uh, rewire your whole entire trailer uh, with, a, with a brownout or a surge, um, it's, it's worth the money. Now, you can get them anywhere. Yeah, they come in 30 and 50 amps. This is a 30 amp. That's all we need. Our trailer is just a 30 amp. So, the tip is, the safety tip is, um, always before you where is it right here before you um uh, plug in always make sure most of these provincial parks uh, if not all provincial parks give you one of these um um stands here where to give you a 30 or uh 120 volts which is just a regular house plug but they also if you look on the side here sometimes it's silver sometimes it's not they give you a um a panel where they've got like uh, the fuses that can you can you can trip it and, and switch it off and on uh, switch it off before you do anything that's what I would suggest switch it off plug it in then switch it back on wait for the lights if you have one like this most of them have lights or some of them have a digital uh, screen and stuff like that uh, wait for the green light in this case this this brand is uh, Progressive Industries I'll, I'll put a link in the description this was very affordable very uh, uh, good recommendation on Amazon so I'll put a link in the description for, b below uh, when you get the green light then you can plug in if you don't get that green light don't plug in because that means something's wrong and you could mess up your trailer so once you get the green light then you plug in then you close it and if you can lock it up in a provincial park you've paid a lot of money for this it, it doesn't hurt to put a little lock on it and lock it up and uh, that's your tip Make sure you get one of these and make sure the light is green before you plug in. So we're sitting here at the beach and you know what I figured out? Julie and I were talking. There are so many people here with Tommy Bahama chairs. Hi, Jake. Paul. Like, we're part of the club. Yeah, we're yeah we're we're hypocrites. We're new we're to the club, club, though. We're new, yeah. So, but they're very versatile chairs. Oh, yeah. so, like like what they do, like for what you get. But you know what I think? I think um, Costco made them popular too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure they were popular before, but Costco made them very popular because whenever anything goes on sale at Costco, it's like. You've hit it if you're the manufacturer of that. <laughs> you hit it big. But looking around here, there's so many chairs and, and like different colors, different styles, but they're doing good. The next safety tip is probably has nothing to do with trailers. It has nothing to do with uh, tow vehicles or anything. It has to do with your own safety. And it is, what else do you think it is? A first aid kit. Always carry a first aid kit with you, whether it's a big one like this, where it has all the stuff in it, um, and also make sure it's replenished. Like it's got a bunch of stuff in there um, that in a first aid you would need. Um, always make sure you have it. You can get them in the smaller ones, different size. Just make sure you have something in a first aid kit for when the inevitable happens, especially if you have kids and stuff like that. Little bumps and scratches end up happening and they always want band-aids and stuff like that. So keep it packed full with band-aids. He's got the same one as me! They're going crazy. She's He's got the same one as me! Do you agree? First aid kit? Yeah. First aid kit, especially whether you're a family or you're going out uh, just as a couple or even by yourself. Know. You never know. You don't want it to happen and you don't want to ever have to use it, but keep it on hand. First aid kit, it's a safety tip. Yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm looking to get some. Yeah. Well, if you go Good luck, Jared. Hi, Do you know what you're doing? Not really, but... Do you have, do you have core strength? Jared, 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 the same handle. Just start from the handle there. The same handle there. It is back there. Yeah. They didn't have it when I went last week. I checked one. Yeah, it's usually later in the season. Yeah. That's what Megan and Just take a little deeper in. Yeah. Spins. You good? I think the mic is. Yeah. Yeah. You're too close together. That's why. Yeah. Oh, they're both stabilizing it. Okay. Put your legs wider apart. Grab your legs. <laughs> <laughs> I think Megan is. But once you're up, it's hard to. You gotta shimmy your legs over now. He's, 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 wearing, he's, uh, now. he's wearing aqua socks too, which makes it harder. Oh. There you go. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I think that made it worse. This is hilarious. I can't. Take a picture quick. He's straightening up. <laughs> <laughs> and there he goes. <laughs> so these guys are, are chuckling at Jared 
going up there for the first time on the paddleboard, thinking he's they're like experts. He he's, he's over there. Yeah, he's doing good. He Dude, this is the first time he's ever done. He's doing really good. And he's given up. <laughs> Just like life, he's given up on a paddleboard. And now the young kids are trying to do handstands on it just to show Jared how easy it is. Okay, the next safety tip is always check, I mean like always, check before you go on a long trip your uh, tire pressure. Uh, whether it's your tire pressure on your tow vehicle or your trailer. Invest in one of these. This is probably the best thing that I've invested in this year. It's a uh, battery powered uh, tire gauge monitor uh, and, and inflator too. Um, it got on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description down below. The battery works on this. I could probably do probably at least 16 to 20 tires, like just checking on it and inflating them. And it works great. So I'll put a link down in the description below. Always check your tires. Make sure they're at the rated uh, PSI before you go on a trip. It makes the world of difference. A few years I never used to do it. And I've started doing it religiously after a few um, in the last few years. And it makes a big, huge difference for A, most importantly, safety, but also for uh, towing your vehicle down the road. It makes the world a difference. That's your next tip. So, it is so hot that I'm actually in the water. I usually don't go in water, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, hot. So, the good thing with this McGregor, uh, the cool thing with McGregor Point, they have this, uh, they have a, I think they have a couple beaches, but this one beach we're on, it's called um, Camper's Beach. And if you swim out about maybe 100 yards, it goes over your head, or most people's heads, especially mine. And then it uh, has like a sandbar, like a shallow sandbar that's maybe two feet deep. So everyone goes out there. That's where I'm going now. Another safety tip. Here at the provincial parks, they've tried to label it, color label it as much as they can, but don't always fall for that. When you're at a dump station, or you see one of these things in the ground and you're new to RVing, and you see here at the provincial parks, when you see a red tower, with a red hose that is not for filling up your freshwater tank please don't do that that's very contaminated or possibly contaminated and uh, you fill that up with your freshwater you can really contaminate yourself uh, possibly by accident see the one over here the blue one that is a freshwater now they've made them fairly close to each other probably too close in my opinion I, I like what they're doing how at the beginning of the park in the beginning of my video I showed you that they've actually put in a new station there far away from the dump station that's what the, the proper way to do it. They shouldn't put it this close because people just get confused and they will go to here. Instead of going here, if this one's full, they will end up using this for their fresh water and uh, very likely you will get contaminated. So don't do that. Then, now these are provincial parks where they use red and green, or sorry, red and blue. Other parks, you just have to read it very, very carefully. See, it, there's a little sign here, but not everyone reads the sign. It says sewage dumping station, danger, unsafe water. Not everyone reads these signs though. That's the beach, that's where we're all staying, under the yellow thing over there. And uh, we're about 200 yards out. And uh, we're standing waist deep in water on this uh, sand bank. So they're all uh, watered out now. They were paddling and floating and throwing balls and Darren hurt himself. Let me see your foot, Darren. That's okay. Show sure, everybody. Oh, that's a superficial. That is see? superficial. That's why I say you need to have a first aid kit. Okay. Ticket. It's at the trailer. Safety tip number one, bring it to the beach. You failed. So we had an awesome time at the beach. It was hot. Like, I mean, hot, hot. If you like hot weather, you'd like it. I love it. But if you don't like it, you probably wouldn't have enjoyed it. But there's always the water, so you can jump in the water, have some fun, cool off and stuff like that. It was great. We've been back for a little bit. We've had some dinner. Now it's 
it seems like, I don't know if it's because the kids, I think we'd go even if there wasn't kids, we're going for ice cream. It seems like we always do it. It seems like it's turned into a tradition. So every time uh, we finish dinner and we're camping somewhere, we've got to go to a camp store where they have ice cream or in town where they have ice cream. Luckily here at McGregor, they have a camp store that has awesome ice cream. But you can also go like, I think eight or 10 minutes away into the nearest small little town called Port Elgin. Awesome, nice little town. And uh, you can go there too for ice cream. But we're just going to go, I think, to the camp store right now. Oh, no cones? Cool. They try to get a perfect one, and they have gotten a perfect one. Yeah, Abby's is pretty you, can, you can get a perfect one sometimes. Mm -hmm. The eyeballs? The eyeballs are scary, Kelly. Yeah. What would you get, Andrew? The eyeballs. Um, I think it's like vanilla and chocolate. Oh. Oh. I'm sure you can't see anything, but we are down here at the lake, at the beach. There is Abby. She's okay. taking pictures of the moon. That's that's a. Uh, oh, you zoomed in. That's a full moon. There's Andrew. We don't have enough light. I apologize for that. But um, Julie's. This is the water. I know you can't even see the water. We need we need a a brighter light than this. Yeah. Julie's in the water there. It's nice. the guy's name? As you can see. What guy? Brian. Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. <laughs> You're a cool dude. I like you. <laughs> Brian. Brian is a, a, a follower of the of the channel Outdoor of Outdoor Connects, and he um he found us on the beach. Yeah, he found us on the beach, uh, and he found us when we were at uh, what was it, Mikasu? Uh, uh, no, sorry, it wasn't Mikasu. No, it was Sobble. Sobble. It was Sobble. Sobble. Okay, just trying to leave McGregor Point here, and we're uh, dumping out. One note about McGregor Point, if you're coming here and you've got a, a black flush tank or you have the wand like I do, like I have a wand here that goes into the toilet and it flushes out the tank. McGregor Point on both their dumps have cut their lines and now it's not threaded anymore. So a lot of, I find a lot of provincial parks are starting to do this now. Uh, I don't know why. They don't realize that a lot of trailers are actually have the automatic black flush. So I don't know why they're doing it, but beware. Hi Abby. Why are you under the blanket? I don't know. She's not under there. Anyways, this trip was only two days, but um, I'm pretty tired. I, I almost feel like it was like ten days. Really? Yeah, yeah I feel, I'm gonna sleep. I feel I feel tired right from this trip. I don't know why, but it was oh. you know why? Probably because it was so hot. Like the weather was awesome. I mean, it was awesome. I like the heat. Some people don't. I like it. It was awesome because we had a beach and water to go into that was refreshing. But if you didn't have that and we didn't have air conditioning in your trailer, that was good. I don't know. No, I wouldn't say exhausting. I'd just say it was, I don't know, I, just, I feel a little tired. But maybe it's the sun just draining you and the weather. But it was good. We met another one of our uh, viewers. Actually, the same guy. No, it was the same yeah, guy. Yeah, the same guy, Brian. <laughs> Brian, well, when I say another, we, we yet again met Brian another time. Um, Brian, we met at Sobble. Sobble. Sobble, yeah. We first met him at Sobble when I was doing a 360 video. And um, by the way, I'm going to get that 360 video out very, very soon. It's probably not going to uh, be of importance or use for most people this season, but next season and the seasons to come, you can use it for sure. Um, we'll have different parks. But yeah, Brian Brian was there on the beach and he ran into us again and uh, such a nice guy. Very nice guy. Yeah. He walked up behind I was yeah, he was behind me and he said, Outdoor Canucks and I'm like, What? I wasn't there. I happened to I'd gone to the trailer to pick something up but when I came back I recognized but it's funny because when I was walking away to go to the trailer from the beach, I passed him and something said to me in the back of my mind, I'm like that guy looks familiar from somewhere, but I just kept walking because he didn't say anything and I didn't say anything and he probably thought the same thing. So we both kept walking and I guess he must have stopped um, these guys and uh, uh, chatted with them for a little bit. So, yeah, we had a good chat. Yeah, nice guy. I mean, our channel is so, so minuscule, tiny, and I wouldn't expect anyone. It would be like astronomical. I guess, well, I was going to say it would be astronomical, but I mean... It's astronomical to see Brian twice. That's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's following us. <laughs> he does a lot of camping. Yeah, he does a lot of camping, so I'm just kidding, Brian. But um, if you do happen to run into us or see us, say hi. I mean, I love to meet different people. I'm 
not as grouchy as I seem in person uh, on camera as I am in person. I'm, I'm actually a nice person. What do you say? She's laughing, but really, I, I'm a nice person. Don't believe anything she says. No, he's a nice person. Lives. He is a nice person. Say hi. We'll, uh, we'll have a chat and stuff like that. Um, anyways, like I said, it, it's astronomical if you do, but if you do, say hi. We're in provincial parks all summer. Yeah. Anyways, next, our next trip is going to be in two weeks for the Labor Day long weekend. Uh, I don't know when you'll be watching this or when it, this will get posted and probably way after Labor Day because um, I'm still editing our 10 day trip that we just finished and if you've been following them you want to see that one our next anyway anyways our next one is good we're going back to Sandbanks where it all started what why I say where it all started this monstrosity that I call mon what do we don't even have a name for it well, anyways what we have behind us here that's when we first got it we went to Sandbanks we took it so yeah, our yeah, first trip in, in, in the in the really? Jayco, yeah, 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 the yeah. Oh. and the truck too. The truck yeah. was brand new too. The truck yeah. was brand new and the trailer was brand new. We we both got got both vehicles within like yeah. two or three weeks of each other, and then we put it together and <laughs> went on a three hundred kilometer a three hundred kilometer trip to Sandbanks. So we're going back to Sandbanks, uh, and I will take you with us. That should be fun. Until then, we'll catch you later, folks. Take care. Bye bye. Okay, so we are here, we're all set up. This is Sandbanks Provincial Park. This is site 649. Oh, I can't go fast. <laughs> and they steal either stuff in your trailer, if you don't lock it up, which I always suggest. I like to say I trust people in this world, but you know, you, you might not always be able to, so. So this guy here, yeah. pulling his trailers, having a hard time yeah. passing through. And I've noticed a few people had a hard time because see this white pickup truck? that is uh, behind that trailer, it's sticking out on the road. So what's the temperature? Um, 5,513.4. Wow. This is Sandbanks Provincial Park. Thank you for watching Outdoor Canucks. See you all in the next video. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to Tesla Canucks. Tesla Canucks? I said Tesla Canucks. Tesla Canucks? Did you say Tesla? Yes. Oh, Take 10? Are those burning? No, they're not. I just... Okay, alright, alright, just make them. Okay, now I need to stop laughing. I asked her to do that.